Hello and welcome to the first episode of Thoughts from Nuge. I know, not to be confused with Notes from Nuge. Um, although hopefully Thoughts from Nuge will include some Notes from Nuge and I don't know about you but I'm really confused. Uh, but what I want you to do on here on Patreon for you lovely Patreon subscribers is um, rather than just talk about music, it's kind of just, I don't know, just just talk really, just have some thoughts, you know. Um, I might do some reviews, I might do a couple of rants. I might juggle, I'm not quite sure that's going to work on a podcast, but do you know what I mean? I've been doing this for 10 years, so, you know, it's time to like stretch my legs a little bit, is what I'm thinking. Also, it's quite nice to be able to talk without Dave interrupting me all the time, because let's be honest, no one likes Dave. And the great thing about doing uh, Thoughts from Nuge is Dave's never going to listen to this, so I can be as abusive to him as humanly possible. And let me tell you, I'm going to give it my best shot. And if you're listening to this uh, on the Geek Syndicate feed, basically I'm just doing this to kind of have a listen really. And obviously it's International Podcasting Day, so I kind of wanted to share certainly this first episode with everyone. But um, after that, subsequent episodes you'll only be able to listen to on our uh, Patreon feed. Um, and that will be for our, anyone who subscribes uh, $3 or more. Um, obviously, you know, you've still got Geek Syndicate, um, Bags of Action and Grad Child Geeks. They're still on our uh, normal Libsyn feed, all free and all that malarkey. But um, my uh, ramblings um, are only going to be for Patreon subscribers. I know. Um, I don't know who's more lucky. Mm. But anyway, uh, sit back and I uh, hope you enjoy uh, this first episode of Thoughts from Nuge. <laughs> So what's going on? Uh, well, what I realised today is today is um, International Podcast Day. So uh, happy International Podcasting to all my podcasting chums. Um, and I just think actually that if you've never podcasted yourself before and you've always kind of had a hankering to do it, I would definitely give it a go. Um, because for me, podcasting has been the one thing that's kind of um, really helped me from a creative point of view. Now, now. Bear with me. Now, for those who haven't met me in the flesh uh, and all you kind of hear is uh, me doing the podcast, you might think that I'm quite a, um, uh, I want to use the word outgoing or gregarious, but that sounds more like Dave. Um, but you might think that I'm a, a quite a confident person, I guess, I suppose is the best way to put it. Um, and in reality, I'm not really. And certainly when we started doing the podcast, if you, people have been following us since the beginning, you'll probably see if you go back and listen. Um, how I've kind of changed as the podcast has gone on. Um, for a start, I drink far less now, which is always good. Um, but podcasting has really helped me with my nerves, um, speaking in public, uh, and just it, putting myself out there in general, really, just kind of promoting the other stuff I do as a, as a writer. So I, I, and I, I know other people who started around the same time who all say the same thing. Um, it's really helped them sort of bring them out of their shell and stuff like that. And it's been a lot of fun. So uh, if you're thinking about doing a podcast, then I would say grab a mic, start talking and just crack on with it because once you start, you can't stop. It is great fun. So yeah, I just want to say a, a big up to um, all my fellow podcasters. I love you all people. Also today, also it's Thunderbirds Day. Um, this was the day in 1965 that um, Thunderbirds made its UK TV debut. And certainly my life changed for the better because I absolutely loved that show. Uh, just fantastic. And then when I was a kid and I used to watch Thunderbirds with my um, family, I definitely wanted to grow up and be um, a Thunderbird. By that, I didn't want to grow up and be, and be white and a puppet. I just wanted to be part of um, International Rescue. And it was always really cool as well because um, you had the five Tracy brothers and there were four. I had three older brothers. So there were like the four Nugent brothers. The slight downside of that is I was the youngest brother, which meant I would have got um, Thunderbird 4, which, let's be honest, was a bit shit. And I can't swim, so that makes it doubly shit in my book. Um, but yeah, it, fantastic show. And uh, even the uh, the new reboot, the CG reboot, is it's good fun. Um, I'm still always going to prefer the original, but the CG show does a pretty good job as well, so that's worth checking out, people. So that is a uh, International Thunderbirds Day, people. The one show which every, every time I sit on the chair now, I keep expecting it to um, slide down into the floor and take me to my rocket ship. 
Yeah, just me. Okie dokie then. Okie dokie then. How about we have a bit of a review? If you like some pulp adventure in your comics, stay tuned. <coughs> you know that sinking feeling you get just before you see a friend that you've not seen in years? You know the feeling. You know when you worry about how much you both change in intervening years? Um, you know, will you still like him? Will he still like you? Will you still like his wife? That's a, a, a different story. Anyway, um, well that's pretty much how I felt um, ever since Stephen Mooney announced the launch date for Half Past Danger 2. Now, Half Past Danger was a one heck of a rollicking pulp adventure comic that I reviewed several years ago and I gave it a grand 5 out of 5. And it's one of my top 10 uh, comics of all time. Uh, the main reason for this is that it's just so much damn fun. I mean, you've got dinosaurs, you've got Nazis, you've got Doc, you've got a Doc Savage wannabe, and you've got Ninja. And there was an issue where they're all stuck on a train, which is still, hands down, one of the best ac- action sequences I've read in a comic. So if that doesn't get your pulp adventure juices flying, nothing will. So there I was, holding my iPad and shaking hands, worried because after all the action and thrills of Half Past Danger... Um, I was worried that Stephen had used up all the tricks in his magical artistic bag. However, when I opened the comic and found the first two pages were a recap of Half Past Danger 1, Volume 1, uh, <laughs> I knew I was in safe hands. Um, the reason being that once again, Mooney proves that he knows Pulp Adventure inside and out. Uh, having a recap reminded me of those old Republic serials where you would get a little recap of the previous episode before throwing you into the thick of the action. To say Stephen runs with this idea as he introduces us to... Uh, uh, Tommy Flynn again is an understatement uh, you know, as much as I love the other characters in Half Past Danger what really brings the world to life is Tommy Irish Flynn every panel this bloke's in um, he's either throwing out a one liner getting punched or just getting the raw end of the deal he's kind of the mate we all have you know the one you love having a drink with going out with but he's the one who always ends up getting you into trouble or getting arrested for attempted armed robbery but again that's uh, another story I'll tell another time <laughs> If I had one criticism about this issue, it would be that I would have liked to see a little bit more about how Tommy's dealing with some of the choices he made in Volume 1. We're told that it haunts him in the recap, and it's hinted at in in several places during the issue, but I would have loved to have seen a little bit more of that. Um, Obviously, this is only the first issue, so I've got my fingers crossed that Tommy's demons get explored a little bit more as the story progresses. So you're saying, that's all good, the story's all good, that's lovely, but it's a comic, so what's the art like, Barry? Um... I thought the art in Half Past Danger uh, couldn't get any better. Boy, was I wrong. Um, It's clear reading Half Past Danger 2, issue 1, that Stephen Mooney hasn't been slumming it in the years between these stories. Uh, His art now feels more assured, as does his writing. I also have to give mad props to Triona Farrell, apologies if I've said your name wrong, um, who was the colourist on this issue, which were fantastic, as was the lettering. And the fact that Stephen is obviously the creator, but he's also written, drawn, and lettered this as well. I mean, again, hats off to you, fella. I know there's a lot of action in the first half of the issue. Mooney spends his second half focusing on the characters, especially the friendship between John, um, John Noble, uh, who I keep wanting to call Doc Noble. Uh, <laughs> Pulp Adventure fans, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so basically the friendship between John and Irish, which is great, and there's some great banter between the two of them. It's really tough to actually get into the plot of this first issue about spoiling anything so I'm I'm trying to skirt around the plot and not really talk about it too much but it's it suffice to say that a lot of things have changed so in conclusion if you loved Half Past Danger all I've got to say to you is brew yourself a pot of tea get the biscuits out find a comfortable armchair and get ready to spend another two 22 pages of fun with with Irish and his mates Uh, I also dare you not to finish reading this and not use the word fecking in every conversation you have with anyone. And if you've never read Half Past Danger, um, then you should. But what you could do is, if you have got, if you don't want to go back and pick it up, then I think the two-page recap at the beginning really sets things up quite nicely. So you could quite easily go into um, Half Past Danger 2 having not read the first volume and get an idea of what's going on. But I think what will happen is you'll get to the end of this issue and go, do you know what? I need to go and pick up volume one because this is some cracking stuff. Also, Ninja's on a train. I mean, come on. Oh, and before I forget, and it's a spoiler, it's safe to say that a shed load of Nazis get punched in the face in this issue. A lot. So this track I'm picking is from a film I watched uh, not too long ago uh, called The Mummy, which was with Tom Cruise. 
and the film wasn't all that to be honest um i was a massive fan of the first mummy movie with uh, brendan fraser i thought it was great proper pulp adventure and this one uh, on paper it, had, it actually had a lot of potential but it just didn't didn't come together for me it didn't work too much of the focus was on tom cruise's character and everyone else was just taking the back seat russell crowe jekyll and hyde I, I don't know what the heck was going on with that but why am I why am I talking about this film? Uh, mainly because the soundtrack was done by Brian Tyler, um, who's fast becoming um, one of my sort of fave soundtrack guys. Uh, he did the soundtrack for the two Guardians of the Galaxy films. Uh, he did Expendables and a whole host of other films as well. And um, he's actually put together a great soundtrack for what is a poor film. But the track I'm picking today is called A Sense of Adventure, which is just proper adventure. Um, and it kind of is. It kind of reminds me of the Uncharted games, actually. The the music from the Uncharted games. So yeah. So this is called "A Sense of Adventure" by Brian Tyler. Have a listen. And see what you think, peeps. That was a sense of adventure. Anywho, uh, as ever, if you need to get hold of me, that sounds dodgy, but if you do need to get hold of me, uh, you, you can find me on Twitter at Geek Syndicate. You can contact me by email, the geeks at geeksyndicate.co.uk, Instagram, Facebook, you know the drill peeps. Once again, people, many, many thanks for uh, helping us to keep the Patreon going. It is much appreciated. And uh, the money is helping to keep Geek Syndicate going. In fact, I used a whole chunk of the money to um, pay off our server fees for this year. So uh, many thanks for that. Okay, until the next time, take it easy. Mm-hmm.